Is neurolinguistic programming a pseudoscience? This is something I get uh, probably two, three, four times a week. I get somebody who comments on one of my Facebook posts, one of my Instagram posts, one of my ads that I'm running and says, NLP is a pseudoscience. Wikipedia says so. <laughs> and I, it always makes me laugh because I say, you're literally quoting a pseudo encyclopedia. Wikipedia is not a real encyclopedia. It is not a real source of credible information. It is a website that can be edited by literally anyone with an internet connection, including those people who have an agenda and who feel threatened by NLP. Um, the fact is NLP cannot be a pseudoscience. And the number one reason for that is that it has never claimed to be a science, right? Just like if I came up to you and said, you're a, uh, you're a pseudo dentist. If you had never claimed to have been a dentist, you'd probably look at me pretty funny and say, I can't be a pseudo dentist because I'm not pretending to be a dentist. The field of NLP has never been a scientific field. It is, it is what's called a model. In the field of NLP, we find people in different fields who are the most excellent at what they do and we model them to find out their techniques. Now that modeling came from many different fields. It started in the field of therapy. And I think a lot of therapists were threatened by this because they modeled the best family therapist who lived at the time, which was Virginia Satir. And what they did is, you know, in the field of family therapy, nobody else could get the results Virginia Satir was getting. She was the best of the best. But they created a model that they could teach to other people, and then other people could get the same kind of results as Virginia Satir. Now, for many people, that's a wonderful thing, and for some people, that's threatening. And um, the field of NLP, that's all it's ever done. It's just modeled successful people. Milton H. Erickson, a highly successful hypnotherapist. Uh, in sports, Greg Louganis, highly successful Olympic diver. And many things have been modeled over the years, but it, it has never claimed to be a science. Although many of the things, many of the people who have been modeled are in scientific fields where their methods have been validated. For example, hypnotherapy is a scientifically validated field. Most people don't know that. Hypnotherapy is scientific. It is. It was created by a, a, a surgeon uh, named James Braid, modern hypnotherapy, and has been scientifically validated. There are scientific papers published about it all the time. And that is a part of the field of NLP because it has been modeled. So one of the things I'm always telling people is I hear people all the time who say, there's never been a scientific study of NLP. And rather than saying what they should say if they had intellectual integrity, which is I've never seen a scientific study. Now I have, I've seen many scientific studies of NLP, hypnotherapy, and the other things that we teach. But most of these people who are saying there's never been a credible study, they've never searched. Because if they did search, they would find one. Matter of fact, there's a website that has 900 clinical research papers proving the efficacy of NLP. If you're interested in looking at that site, you can go to nlp.fyi forward slash NLP dash articles. And you can look there. Um, you know, the thing is like, for example, look at the technique called EMDR, which is all the rage in the field of psychotherapy, right? EMDR came out in the late 80s, early 90s, and psychotherapists use it all the time to help people with major things like trauma. What most people don't realize is that EMDR is actually an NLP technique. It's based on the NLP eye accessing cues, and EMDR was brought to market by the NLP trainer Francine Shapiro. Now, Shapiro tried to hide after she came out with EMDR, she tried to hide the fact that she was an NLP trainer because then it would be clear that she didn't create the technique, right? Uh, but however, there are still newspaper articles from Southern California that are published online that you can see the original newspaper articles where she was teaching NLP trainings and she was very proud to be an NLP trainer for a long time. Um, so EMDR is a scientifically validated technique and it's an NLP technique. Again, the actual NLP technique is called eye movement integration. We actually have a course on it at Transform Destiny, EMI. And uh, if you're interested just to see all of the articles that have been published about EMI, you can go to nlp.fyi forward slash EMDR dash articles. So again, all these people saying that there've never been studies done, of course there have been studies done. There've been studies done on NLP itself as well as the fields that NLP models. Right? And again, it cannot be a pseudoscience because we don't claim to be a science. It's a model of techniques that have worked best across various fields and disciplines, including things that have nothing to do with therapy, like sports performance, right? business performance, marketing and sales, relationships, all kinds of things. And again, if we go back to the original NLP techniques, right? NLP parts integration is modeled from Virginia Satir and family therapy psychology. 
You don't see people running around going, psychology is a pseudoscience. <laughs> Conversational hypnosis is modeled from Milton H. Erickson's use of clinical hypnotherapy in psychology. People aren't running around, at least informed people, are not running around saying that hypnotherapy is a pseudoscience. Anchoring is modeled from behavioral psychology, and nobody claims that behavioral psychology is, is a pseudoscience. None of those fields are pseudosciences, right? So here's the thing. The problem with the original studies that came out in NLP, and there were some studies that came out early in the 1980s that did not look favorable for NLP. And part of the reason for that was, number one, the people who were doing the studies did not have the best intentions of the field. It wasn't NLP practitioners who were doing the studies. It was people in psychology who were, felt threatened by NLP and they wanted to prove that it wasn't uh, that it didn't have efficacy. Um, part of the other problem is that many of the studies that were done were sabotaged right from the beginning. Um, they would take somebody who didn't know what NLP was as a client. They would pair that person with a person who didn't know what NLP was as the NLP practitioner. They would hand the NLP practitioner a piece of paper and say, read this to the client. Now, the problem with that is, can you imagine any other field <laughs> where you give somebody, can you imagine if they wanted to prove the scientific validity of medicine and they said to somebody, you're gonna get a heart surgery and this person isn't a doctor, but we want this to be a double blind study. So we're gonna take a stranger off the street. We're gonna hand them a piece of paper that says how to do a heart surgery. Of course, that's not gonna work, right? So these studies were, were sort of stymied right from the beginning. In actuality, one of the highest tenets of NLP is what we call behavioral flexibility. You need to be able to detect when the client is having shifts and you need to be able to switch techniques and use the techniques that are most appropriate in the moment. And most of the studies, and this is part of the issue with the scientific method, right? It's taken us out of the dark age. Science is wonderful, it's fantastic, but it's also deterministic. Science studies things where you have a stimulus and a response, and the stimulus and response need to be the same every single time. Science cannot prove lightning. Something that we've all experienced. We would never say lightning doesn't exist, but lightning has never been scientifically validated. You cannot capture it. You can't test it. They don't know what lightning is. There's hypotheses about it being um, a plasma or a fifth element, but nobody knows what lightning is because you can't scientifically test it. You can test some of the conditions around it. Right? And so this is sometimes the issue with doing studies like these, is the studies are too rigid in order to get the result that you want. Um, there are some books that are written about this. One of the most recent books is called The Clinical Effectiveness of Neurolinguistic Programming. You can buy that on Amazon. It's a bit pricey, uh, but it is there. Ultimately, the question is this, does NLP work for you? I know the first 25 years of my life were pretty much a disaster. I hated myself and I hated my life until I was 25 years old. And then neurolinguistic programming came into my life. And when I learned NLP, I learned to run my mind so my mind no longer runs me. I no longer deal with anxiety. I no longer deal with um, confidence issues. I no longer deal with memory issues. I no longer deal with negative emotions. Uh, I have found the things in my life. I found the love of my life in many, in many ways due to NLP. I did several NLP exercises prior to meeting her that had I not, I would not have found my soulmate or had I found my soulmate, I would, maybe would have sabotaged that relationship, right? So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, NLP works for me. The question is, does it work for you? And if you're a professional, the question is, does it work for your clients? When you work with clients, are your clients getting results? And here's the funny thing about it. For all these people that say it's a pseudoscience and it doesn't work and all this other stuff, do you really think that for 53 years now, people would be practicing NLP? and that the field wouldn't have just like the worst reputation with people all over the place saying, I got ripped off, it doesn't work. <laughs> I mean, you don't find that, right? When you look at, at the work that people are doing in this field, we're getting great results with clients. Now, it doesn't fit into the very tiny rigid box that a lot of people in the field of psychology like to talk about, but frankly, most NLP practitioners aren't psychologists. We're not working on psychology stuff. We're working on helping people improve their lives, not overcome disorders. Um, and that being said, there are many professionals, licensed professionals who do use NLP to help people overcome disorders. We train a ton of them. In virtually every NLP training that we do, we are training psychologists, psychiatrists, marriage and family therapists, licensed clinical social workers, and they get results with these techniques as well. So ultimately, that's the question. And if you're interested in learning more about NLP, head on over to our website. It's transformdestiny.com. That's www.transformdestiny.com. You can join our mailing list there on the front page and I will just give you a, a, a bunch of free NLP stuff just for joining the mailing list. I send out regular articles uh, on NLP and using NLP in your own life and with your clients and everything. So I hope you love this video. Again, the website is www.transformdestiny.com and I will see you 
on the next video. Hey, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. I'm posting NLP and related videos every single day and I know you'll love them. And if you want priority notification every time I post a video, hit that bell button too and keep an eye out for the next video.